From CBSDenver.com, this is one of their bloggers, Dr. Dave Hinda. Is your handshake as dangerous as smoking? And I can't tell if this is some kind of like health industry fear mongering. Be afraid of your fellow human beings. You could get infected. And by the way, that really works. I mean, all the STD education I got in high school and middle school scared the shit out of me. But now we're being taught, oh my gosh, you have to be afraid of handshakes as well. Now, this is a little more specific in its application. I'm actually kind of excited to see that the capabilities that we have in terms of studying these things are being applied to something as universal as this. It's a fairly standard greeting, the hello handshake. Whenever I meet a new patient, I say hi, introduce myself, and stick my hand out for a shake. And if it's someone I have seen before, there's a hi, how have you been, with a simultaneous handshake. Oh, this, this is clearly a good guy. He, he shakes hands. But if infectious disease experts from UCLA have their way, my handshake may go the way of leeches and bloodletting, replaced by a long-distance wave or salute. A salute? Doctor, I, maybe he's using the term more broadly here, but you your doctor reporting for duty. What is wrong with your health, sir? Yeah, a commentary in the Journal of the American Medical Association says it's time to say goodbye to the handshake greeting in a healthcare setting, or for that measure, goodbye to the goodbye handshake as well. Sure, a firm handshake, handshake can be seen as a sign of greeting and compassion, but it's also believed to be one of the easiest methods to transmit germs. We actually believe this, we've actually believed this for a long time, but perhaps there is a new urgency in the mysterious new world of diseases like MERS, which I haven't really been following adequately. I admit, sorry if you feel that there's some massive health threat from MERS because it's killed, what, a couple dozen people now. But I would say the fact that, you know, 40,000 Americans die on the streets every year, that there are children all over the world dying because of America's imperialist policies, the American government's, uh, hundreds of children who have been killed by drone strikes, you're eight times more likely to be killed by a cop than by a terrorist. Eh, I haven't been exactly getting into this, but I understand that it has had a significant effect in the mainstream media as a fear-mongering device to get people to feel that they are, you know, need to be more dependent on the medical establishment. So the recommendation is to treat handshakes like smoking. In other words, since there are a lot of places that simply have smoke-free zones, it seems like a good idea to have handshake-free zones. Now, this is actually something I, I'm in favor of, and, but it's an unfortunate consequence, again, of government interference in the medical industry. If you recall, back before the American government was as nearly as involved as it is today, Doctors weren't making nearly as much money compared to the average laborer. And yes, I understand more education has gone into making a modern doctor than a doctor of 100 years ago. But back then, doctors were, uh, being a doctor was a competitive industry that drove prices down. Whereas today, because of the government control, because of all the hoops you have to jump through, because of all the costs with overhead and so on and so forth, the house call doesn't really exist anymore unless you're super rich. You can't pay for a doctor's time to come to your home. And back then, you didn't have these concentrations of sick people in hospitals where you have these hotbeds of infection that now produce antibiotic-resistant bacteria because antibiotics are being overproduced, another consequence of government in, uh, intervention in the pharmaceutical industry, pushing drugs on people. That means educational programs, signage, I guess a stencil of a handshake with a big X through it, and perhaps penalties for violating the no handshake policy. Now, that would be really funny if, uh, if, if, if cops were out giving citations for people shaking hands. Excuse me, sir. You're in a handshake-free zone. I'm going to need you to stop right there. You're being detained. You're under arrest for shaking hands in a handshake-free zone. I'm going to have to see some identification. You will be issued a misdemeanor citation for this. But there is uh, there, there, some legitimacy, at least, to the thought behind this. The authors write, quote, removing the handshake from the healthcare setting may ultimately become recognized as an important way to protect the health of patients and caregivers rather than a personal insult to whoever refuses another's hand. They recommend we develop an alternate greeting that doesn't involve touching and one that won't insult someone. A text, a phone call, a megaphone hello from down the hallway. It all makes me wonder, if no contact is allowed, how am I supposed to do an exam? I mean, that involves actually touching someone to figure out what's wrong. Perhaps I'm supposed to use a glove attached to the end of an eight-foot-long stick from the hallway. Now that's insulting. In the meantime, I will continue to wash my hands between patients, use soap, hand sanitizer, whatever. I still think with common sense, proper hygiene, personal contact with your doctor, creating a bond that aids a key relationship. I'm not ready to toss it away quite yet. But a little germ awareness never hurt anyone.
Dude, this is like, this is really creepy. You're not like doing much for your credibility, just not answering the questions. I was assaulted by an undercover FBI agent and officers of the Metropolitan Police Department. And we've had a lot of police checkpoints here recently. 